Hi, Keith here and welcome to the July 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. We've had a rather disruptive summer through some illnesses in the family, but we are back to normal now thankfully. So July, August and our first annual update are all due shortly, so there will be a flurry of activity on the channel as we catch up. But anyway, on with the review. As always, here's a reminder of our installation. We have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, 9 panels are on the west facing roof, 7 panels are on the east facing roof, and combined there's a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. We also have 5 pylon batteries in the loft, and they have a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts. And this is all controlled by a Solis 5G inverter. So, as we run through the representation of the solar day over the course of the year for our location, let's take a look at the results for July 2023 and see whether we continue in the same vein as May and June of this year. So, if we look at the midpoint of the month on July the 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the northeast at 4.57 in the morning and set at 8 minutes past 9 in the evening in the direction of the northwest. There is a total of 6 hours and 11 minutes of daylight on this date. The 15th of July has 25 minutes less daylight compared to the 15th of June, and that's because we've now passed the summer solstice and the shortest day of the year. So at the middle of the day, the sun is at 60 degrees above the horizon, which is just 2 degrees lower than the same date in June. Weather-wise, uh, it's not actually been that great. Um, in the UK, we've had one of the wettest Julys on record, and certainly the wettest in nearly 15 years. Our Netatmo weather station measured 60 millimetres of rain, which was 146% of the average monthly rainfall for July, according to our local Met Office weather station. And as you will see on the next slide, that has really impacted our solar generation. So if we look at our solar generation stats, um, in July we saw 719 kilowatt hours of generation, and that's significantly down on the previous month. Overall, we still averaged 31 kilowatt hours of generation per day, but compared to last month, where we had 13 days on which we generated at least 35 kilowatt hours, that only actually happened once during July. In the main, our generation was usually between 20 to 30 kilowatt hours per day. Our worst day was the 14th of July, where we only generated 7.4 kilowatt hours. Although, if you look at the rain gauge data that I showed on the previous slide, we did have over 5 millimetres of rain that day, mainly in the afternoon and early evening. Our best day was the 7th of July, where we generated 38 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the 7th of July on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see that it was a pretty clear sky all day because there are no big drops where it might be cloudy. Um, so that means that of the 38 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 10.7 kilowatt hours directly from the panels and we sent 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours to the batteries and ultimately exported 20.7 kilowatt hours back to the grid. And with regards to the batteries, because we had some stored from the previous day, we actually used 10.7 kilowatt hours in total. And in terms of peak generation, in terms of kilowatt hours, we saw a maximum of 5.6 kilowatt hours at peak generation on the 11th of July and a minimum of 1.8 kilowatt hours on the 14th of July. And if you remember, that's the date where we had a significant amount of rain. Typically, on our daily basis, uh, our peak generation is between 3.5 and 6 kilowatt hours. And for the month, on a daily average, we had 4.7 kilowatt hours. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage, and grid export. The 26th was the best day we saw in July, with 99% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and batteries. On that day, we actually only imported 26 watts from the grid, but we generated 24 and a half kilowatt hours, of which we used 8.2 kilowatt hours from the panels, sent 10 kilowatt hours to the batteries, and exported 6.2 kilowatt hours to the grid. And because we had storage from the previous day in the batteries, we used 12.1 kilowatt hours in total, meaning that for the day we used 20.5 kilowatt hours of generated usage, and that pretty much ran the house for the entire day. Over the month, we exported 194.5 kilowatt hours, 
averaging around 6.2 kilowatt hours per day as an export. And on the 7th of July, we did export over 20 kilowatt hours. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery and grid import for the month. As you can see, we had 19 days in July where 95% or more of our electricity came directly from our solar generation. For the month in total, 91% of our electricity usage was directly from the solar panels and batteries, with only 9% imported from the grid. And this is how our import cost per day looks. The blue being our standing charge at 42 pence per day, and the orange being the grid import cost at 34 pence per kilowatt hour. Our average import cost for the day is 60 pence. Uh, it's actually one pound and three pence uh, overall if you then factor in the standing charge. So, how did we do in July 23? As we saw, 91% of our electricity consumption in July is through our solar generation, either directly from the panels or from the batteries. We generated in total 719 kilowatts of electricity and we used 279 kilowatt hours directly exported 194 kilowatt hours and sent 245 kilowatt hours to the battery our grid import cost in total for july was 33 pounds and 82 pence and that was for 61 kilowatt hours we were also paid 15 pounds and 36 pence for our export back to the grid for the month so that actually reduced our electricity bill to 18 pounds and 46 pence our generated usage would have cost an additional 198 pounds and 29 pence if we didn't have the solar generation and battery storage in place so our total bill should have been 232 pounds and 11 pence based on our total house usage and without the system actually running so overall for the month we have seen a reduction in our generation and also our export values and savings and that has been due in the main to the weather limiting our generation capabilities with the amount of rain that we've had. Also, our solar day is now shortening day by day. So it is expected that we'll see reduced solar generation throughout the remainder of the year as we move into autumn and winter. That being said, despite generating 218 kilowatt hours less than we did in June, which is a reduction of around 23%, we did actually send a comparable mount to our batteries and we still saved £198 on what the cost would have been uh, for our electricity bill if we hadn't had solar and batteries in place. In total, for the year to date, we've generated 3.8 megawatt hours of which we've used 3.0 uh, megawatts and we've exported one megawatt. And our grid input total is still one and a half megawatt hours which is less than half of our grid import for the same period last year. So that was our July overview for August hopefully the weather will improve and we'll get the chance to have some decent generation for the remainder of the summer. As always let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see and if you found this video useful please do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.